Good afternoon and welcome back to another episode of the Clever Angle Podcast. I'm your host, Tevin McGee, and today I have a very special guest. I have Patrick Malone here with uh, NEA Tennis. We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, what NEA Tennis is, uh, the game of tennis, and what it means to the community and his backstory and how he got started with tennis. Pat, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Happy to be here. Yeah, so this is probably the fa- my favorite episode that I've done, even though we mm-hmm. haven't done it yet. Because uh, over here in the last eight months or so, tennis has just become a major part of my life uh, and my wife's life, my brother's life. And we're, we're tennis addicts uh, now. So I was like, man, who could we interview within the community that the people want to hear from and that is crazy about tennis? And you're the first person that uh, that came to mind. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, t- yeah, it's been great. Uh, you know, we got at this about five years ago. And uh, just didn't see a whole lot of play on the public tennis courts. And, um, you know, I, the, the game has meant so much to me. Uh, and I saw an opportunity to uh, teach tennis to some folks uh, and then really open the game up to uh, everyone, uh, you know, that can swing a racket. Absolutely. So um, can you just give like a short elevator pitch of, who you are, where you're from, and then we'll kind of lead into how we got to tennis. First floor starts in uh, probably the first floor of Columbia Hospital in uh, Columbia, Missouri. Um, That's where I was born. Didn't live there long. We moved to Yazoo City, Mississippi, and then to Camden, Arkansas, in South Arkansas, and that's where I learned to play. Uh, My mom and dad taught me on public courts there in Camden, and it was uh, tennis was hot back then. You had some superstars uh, on TV, athletes too, Muhammad Ali, uh, first hero of mine, uh, and then John McEnroe in the tennis world, and Bjorn Borg and Jimmy Connors were American, uh, and, and a lot of other Americans there. But uh, tennis was really cool back then. Um, and so 70s and 80s was big. And so that's when I grew up playing. And uh, so I played high school tennis in Batesville, Arkansas. Moved there when I was about uh, 11 years old. And tennis was really going at the time uh, in a very small town of 6,000 uh, back then, I believe. And uh, But we had 100 people in our tennis tournaments. You know, each time we ran a, a tournament, and it was fun. And the kids and adults played together a lot. It looked a little different. League looked a little different. The names were different in tennis, but uh, it was still people were playing for fun and playing to get in shape and uh, to socialize, uh, which is exactly what's happening again now um, at the right time. Yeah, COVID came along there. We had discussed that you know, before, and uh, it saw a big push of new people coming out to a court that's 78 feet apart. You know, so naturally socially distant, like golf. And so we got a lot of new players, you know, during that time. Yeah. So NEA tennis, you said it, you mentioned earlier that it's about five years old. So what did this, the landscape of tennis look like in Jonesboro five years ago? Because I don't remember there being that much action out there on the Allen Park courts. And, you know, I was really su- surprised and taken back by the number of people that uh, play tennis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, uh, you know, it took a little bit to get there to let them know that we had some professionally organized tennis on the public courts. And, uh, you know, through the use of technology and partnering with the right people, um, Parks and Rec and the, and, the, and the great schools here in Jonesboro, uh, and the local clubs, the tennis pros there, you know, realized that we're a feeder program. And so uh, everybody kind of pulled for us, and uh, that helped. I mean, it, truly a community uh, has come together, and that's what's happened. NEA Tennis is uh, a little church family. I mean, that's what they are, and they're rabid, and they'll play when it's 30 degrees, and uh, they want to play all the time. And uh, I want them to have the best facilities, you know, and uh, – what struck me more than anything after, after five years, um, you know, I, I know that tennis changes lives. I've seen it 
saved my life and make my life better many different times through 56 years. But uh, just the way people want to go out there and hang out and socialize and connect. They got tennis in common. Uh, you know, they got fitness in common. Um, they got families in common. You know, they live in the same place, and tennis is, tennis is awesome. And we need to uh, scream it from the top of the trees, you know, to get the types of facilities we need, not only for us, but uh, for, for the kids that may not ever have a chance to play a, a sport like tennis. And we can do that. So I'm yeah. fired up about it, as you can tell. Absolutely. Yeah, I know my, I guess, uh, outside view of tennis growing up and just even here recently was like it was more of a uh, country club sport. Like it was like a one of those things that if, um, you know, you did later on in life, like, all right, oh, I'm 45 now. I'm going to pick up tennis. And um, I don't know. It's just there was a lot of draw to it. And I didn't realize how addicting that it was going to become <laughs> yeah. uh, for me. That's so awesome. um, quick story. It, it's the year's 2009. So I'm, this is my last game of high school basketball. We're on the road and we're playing in Forest City. And uh, played basketball all throughout junior high and high school. I, I was never one of those guys that got to play a lot. But this game was, you know, special to me because it was the last one. They were, they were letting all the seniors start. And I just remember that feeling of like, man, I'm a part of the offense. I'm out here. People are cheering for me. Like this is one of the greatest feelings ever. When I say out, you say both. When I say gangster, you say both. When I say out, you say G. When I say shorty, you know me. Say out, both, gangster, both, oh, G. Shorty, you don't know me. Out, out, both, both, gangster, both, both, oh, G. And shortly following the game, you know, you, you come back down to earth and you realize you're out of high school and uh, you're not going to play collegiate sports anywhere. So there was a while there that I didn't ever think that I was going to get to experience that level of uh, fun and competitiveness that I felt during that last game. And I, I remember playing tennis a few months ago and I kind of felt that again. Mm. You know, I kind of felt yeah. that fire of like, man, like this is this is something special here that I haven't felt in a long time. And ever since then, I've just been on a everybody needs to try this. You know, everybody yeah. needs to come out here yeah. and try tennis because it it really is rewarding. Uh, it's frustrating at times at the beginning, but the progress that you make every single time that you play yeah. just keeps bringing you back yeah. you know um yeah. we played in that halloween tournament a few a few months ago mm -hmm. i look back on my game from then to just now i'm like man like i've learned so much mm -hmm. uh since then so what is something that you could say to someone that's never played tennis that wants to get out there what, what would you say to that person well anybody can learn to play you know first I and mean, there's no doubt from uh uh, people in wheelchairs to, uh, you know, people, amputees, I, I've seen it. And so uh, whatever the disability, whatever uh, hurdle, obstacle you think you've got, um, you, you can learn to play tennis. Uh, you know, there's some, uh, once you get uh, a certain age that you have limitations, I'm already feeling it, you know, and so, and there's others out there like that. Um, and we want them on the tennis court. There are so many ways to adapt the game to every single level of play now. New tools that we have, new types of training that our pros have gotten and, and community coaches have gotten that, uh, you know, make it easy to be successful at tennis early. You know, progression tennis balls. You've probably seen, I think your, uh, your child was out there. Yeah, the yeah, balls. my daughter Yeah, was out yeah, there. So the red balls are great. They're great for beginning adults. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, feel like they're being penalized the adults if they're using them so what, what is what is the red ball what does that do is it is it like hit the strings differently or is it just for uh, you to be able to see the ball better or what are the, what so are the the science behind it uh sports science behind it is it's you know a, a 50 percent less compressed ball so it's bigger uh, they have foam and felt, and they bounce a little bit different on the court, but they're made to bounce in the strike zone of a child that's eight and under, a certain size. Um, 
And so if it if a pro's tossing a red ball and it's bouncing in that strike zone, you know how those yellow balls are quick. Oh yeah. So yeah. The, and it slows it down, gives you time to get in position, uh, you know, to make that turn to hit the ball out in front of you. And red balls, you can rally so much earlier. So if kids are rallying the ball back and forth, they're playing tennis. And if they're playing tennis, it's fun. And so I love that new style of tennis. Um, you know, there's all styles of tennis, all ways to teach it, um, reasons to get in it, ways to play it. Um, so, but, it, and, and it's neat in little Jonesboro, Arkansas, we got just about every avenue you can take. If a child wants to uh, work on a scholarship to play after high school, we got pros that can do it here in this town. They're wonderful. It's an anomaly here in Jonesboro, you know, with the level. And that's that was the base that we saw five years ago was look at these great pros uh, at the at the country clubs in the in uh, the trim gym. Alex, these are these are really good pros, and so uh, we, we want to be a feeder program. I mean, what a great way to get them into those. Uh, programs if that's their route if they want to play socially uh if they want to play intramural tennis we want to show them how to do that you know if they want to meet people in town and get a job that's we want to help them absolutely so you know five years ago when this program was just starting up where would you say the most people played tennis in town Mm. i've been a trim gym member my whole life so i i can remember people playing on the indoor courts and outdoor three oaks is something i've been hearing for a long time since i've been about 16 so where was the main tennis so i well trim gym's always you know been it's one of the old and and jonesboro country clubs you know been there a long time uh and they both have such uh good memberships of of tennis players um i used to play at, at trim gym or three oaks uh when i was 16 I would drive over from Batesville and it, because there are indoor courts over here. Couldn't, you know, Little Rock was the only place that had them back then or Memphis, but Jonesboro had them. Even Paragold actually had them uh, back in the 80s, and I played there too indoors. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but the tennis was at the clubs. That's where most of the tennis was. Um, and league tennis, adult league tennis, and junior league tennis are, are big. Uh, platforms and, and for people to come in and play um, and to play on a team and compete against each other of equal ability and move on to Little Rock, you know, to, to state tournaments and then sectionals. We've had just recently had teams do that. Um, so that's another way to get into tennis and play. But uh, now there's a lot of play on our public tennis courts and, uh, that has just grown tennis by having, you know, so many more people to play. Yeah. So if you were a tennis player new to tennis, you're past high school, what would you recommend someone doing locally in town for the first year uh, to get into the game? Yeah, no doubt. Find a tennis pro and get lessons. Jump in group clinics. They're out there uh, at, at all four facilities. Um Jump in on social leagues on Wednesday night, on Sundays, uh, you know, get connected, uh, social media. If you do that, get, you know, sign there's, we have phone apps, um, you know, so we're working on a lot of things. We're, you know, even after five years, we got a long way to go. There's still things we got to do, you know, to get the word out there that we're, that we're even on the tennis courts. Um, but it, you know, we, we don't want to over promise. And in because there's a shortage of tennis coaches, we need new coaches. So if people are out there that played high school tennis, that want to make extra money, that want to follow a career path to being a tennis pro, then get with me, you know, get in touch with me. So we've heard a little bit about you in the uh, NEA tennis uh, story. Is it just you now over five years, or do you have a team? Like, what is that? Well, it's really always been a team. I mean, it has. Yeah. And so, you know, I just I had a fire in me, and I got it started. Um, uh, Me and and several pros just getting that on their tennis court and showing we're available. Uh, And then it became bigger than that, you know. And then it became uh, we need to partner with the tennis association uh, and start teaching tennis for free. You know, and we we uh, we teach as much tennis for free as we do for teach tennis lessons. And that's what it should be. You know, that's what we want to do on the public tennis courts. 
Um, so, what do you what do you think it is about tennis that makes it so competitive? Because I've played it with people out here, and you yeah. know, it's it's anywhere from people that are fresh out of high school to uh, you know, forty year olds, thirty year olds, yeah. and they're all super fired up and competitive about yeah. tennis. What makes the sport so competitive? Yeah. So, to me, to me personally, uh, you know, it's such a physical sport, and uh, you know, a lot of athletes don't see that. You know, that have never really got out there and tried to play. And uh, from an early age, I loved to box, um, and my dad just would jab my nose to death and. Uh, you know, teach me it really didn't hurt that bad, get hit in the face, uh, that type of thing. And then from there, football. I played a lot of football. I loved playing quarterback, but I was so small. I couldn't even see over the line at sixth grade, but I played quarterback. I loved it quick on my feet. I could throw the ball because my dad and I and my brother, he just played football in the backyard every day. You know, something. We were always doing something. Uh, and then tennis – you know, we like to do things that we're, that we're good at. And because tennis didn't require me to be a big old guy, um, but at the same time, I, I could tell that the better players were, man, they were in shape and they were working every day. Um, I was fortunate in a little town of Batesville, Arkansas, to grow up next to uh, a girl who was three or four years older than me who went on to play for the Razorbacks and was just a, a, a wonderful tennis player. And she beat me up, you know, all the time. There are a couple of girls in Batesville that did, and they were really good players. Um, you know, so that allowed me to uh, just, I, I think, just become a better player doing that. Yeah, I think that um, my tennis journey started with kind of just playing recreationally at uh, Allen Park. Uh, my brother went through the tennis apprenticeship and, you know, we kind of got hooked that way. And then very quickly here in th this past July or somewhere around there, June, July, we got thrown into a mixed doubles league and we were on that mixed doubles league. And I was like, man, this is, this is pretty cool. Like, you know, we're getting to play with people of, you know, uh, both sexes and, you know, everybody's it's, it's fair game. You know, there's no, if you're a good tennis player, you're a good tennis player. And, that, and that's something that I didn't yeah. really realize <laughs> about the sport until I started playing that, yeah. you know, uh, you can gain a lot of experience and knowledge from a, a lot of different people. Yeah. And I got off train. I thought, you know, you asked me about the compet why it's so competitive. And I started yeah. with boxing. You know, it's just to me, it, it it's a sport that wraps up a lot of all of those other sports up in the one It's my son's an MMA fighter and I'll take him out on the tennis court and hit and wear his butt out. He is exhausted, but he can get in that gym on an MMA and look like, you know, a pro and, and grapple for five minutes each round and do that. But tennis is different. I mean, it, it, it is a physical sport and you're always having to think ahead and plan ahead. There's so much strategy to it. Uh, you know, and, and once you, can let go of thinking how to play, you know, and, and all the technical parts and just play and freely in your mind, it's a, you can get so much better and, and it's, you know, you get what you put into it as you're finding yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. No, no, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. And one thing that I'm finding out very quickly is that it's such a mental game. It's mm. such a mental game. You know, some of the other sports like track is one thing that I'm, uh, I have a background in running track and, basketball those things you could just play harder and or run faster and you're going to get better results that always doesn't happen in tennis and it's frustrating yeah and you're out there by yourself especially yes. in singles yeah and andre agassi you know wrote in his book open that it was the loneliest place in the world you know you're out there and you're always talking to yourself and so you know one of the mental things that you got to do is if you're going to talk to yourself make sure it's good talk it, you know, and not saying you dumb you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It is a mental sport, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, and it's one of those things that you know, I have found myself getting into these patterns where I'll do, I'll start off really good, and I'm not thinking I'm playing loose. I'm like, man, I've hit like eight <laughs> in a row, and like, uh, when am I gonna mess up? And then all of a sudden, I mess Boom. up, and and now I'm like, all right, well, yeah. now I gotta, I gotta rally myself mentally and get back into it. But like you said, it's that's one of those the things. challenge. Yeah, and that is that's the challenge. Yeah. Um, getting out what you put in um, is is rewarding because I'm like, man, all right, well, now I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm going to watch these videos on how I'm going to get my backhand better, and I'm going to go to drill on Thursday, and I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. And it just becomes one of those, uh, you know, 
things that, all right, I, I want to get better at this. I, I you know, I don't want to quit. And the, the next time I'm going to apply these things uh, to the next match I play. And you're just that much more excited to, to keep playing. Absolutely. Um, so, and the people out there are a lot of fun. Yes. I yeah. Mean, those are good folks. Yeah, they, they are. Yeah. And it's one of those uh, really diverse sports that you can yeah. uh, be matched up or teammates with people that you would have never met otherwise. And you're like, man, like – um, you know, you play tennis. Yeah, let's go play. So it's funny over five years, just about every new husband and wife like yours will call. And I don't think you did this, but it's, so I'm not putting you on the spot, but a lot of them do a lot of the, the young husbands and wife will, will join the social leagues and they'll say, Hey, we, can you make sure that I play with my, my husband or can you make sure I play with my wife? That happens one time. And then, you know, and then, then they really get more comfortable, you know, and then they yeah. ask them, oh, yeah, I don't want to play with my husband. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's one of those things that, you know, you don't really know anybody. So going out there, especially yeah. in the doubles game, uh, you don't want to look like you don't know what you're doing and that sort of thing. But very quickly you get comfortable and you're able to adapt to different partners and different things like that. And so I, think about kids doing the same thing on a tennis court. Yeah having to talk to each other and having to adapt and those, hey, man, you know, we got a, we got a really cool sport. And, and I, again, I told you I was a late bloomer. I didn't figure these things out for 50 years. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it took 50, man. It took 50 years. Yeah, and especially being in our, in our first year, I mean, I've learned so much. We played in a singles league this fall, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we did the mixed doubles league. We've done three or four socials. Uh, we've done some drills at Earl Bell. I mean, we can't get enough yeah. uh, tennis and yeah. uh, looking forward to the spring season. But, um, yeah, like the fact that one of the, the one thing that I didn't know was, you know, you get to go to state for tennis. Uh, That's cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah that, I mean, that is definitely no doubt uh, adult competitive league tennis. That's the icing on the cake, you know, as folks to take their friends and go uh, – you know, to Little Rock and play. Now, some of those tournaments, this is a whole different subject, but we want some of those tournaments in Jonesboro, too. you got to be thinking about that. Um, shop local, right? I mean, it's the Absolutely. same thing. We've got to uh, – we – Jonesboro is a hub of northeast Arkansas. Um, we got a lot of folks over here, and it would be really cool if we had a place that we could bring all the players from over the state to play a mixed double state tournament and fill – heads and beds. And so that's important. There's a lot of arms and we need help. We need volunteers, people that are passionate about the game that see that, man, you know, this can change lives in Jonesboro. So, yeah, absolutely. So one thing I want to talk to, we've talked a little bit about the past of NEA. What are three goals for the future that you have for NEA tennis? Uh, so NEA tennis, I want to talk about that for a minute. Really my, my, my personal passion, Pat Malone's NEA tennis was kind of the catalyst here. Um, but as we grow, really, it is, it, it's a community tennis association that you're a member of. Um, so I want power, you know, for lack of a better way to say it, power to the people to run these community programs, uh, attract tennis pros to the area, uh, increase tournament participation. I, you know, we have, uh, you know, so bringing more tennis to Jonesboro is a big a big thing for me. I want more players to come here to play. Um, I, I can just see that just like the other sports, um, it, they draw the right type of people that travel well, you know, and they're going to stay in our hotel and spend money at the restaurants, tennis, especially. Um, but love all serve all. I wanted to talk a minute about that. It's, it's extremely important. Um, and it's that, that is where my focus is going to be. I think the pow the people are ready to, to take NEA tennis and the Northeast Arkansas Tennis Association and just run with it, all right? And Love All, Serve All um, is basically our National Junior Tennis Learning Network. And it, it was started by Arthur Ashe back in the 60s. There's 200 and something chapters in the United States, and their nonprofits uh, were the second chapter in Arkansas. And so together with Kane Connect, Jonesboro Schools After School Program uh, and City Youth Ministries and several other organizations and partners in the community, we're teaching tennis for free to these kids after school uh, at Micro Society Health and Wellness. And we want more kids. How many kids would you say you have right now? Well, and they, they so we scholarship, 
four to six kids every eight weeks. Um, and right now they're the same kids. We're de- trying to develop these kids into the next high school tennis players um, from the from the program. And then we see some kids twice a week. We see some kids once a week, but anywhere from seventy to a hundred, you know, different kids. Uh, you know, n- it hasn't been that busy. We we miss COVID. We got kind of hurdles, and we you know, but uh, we're on point in. Uh, you know, we're finally official as a nonprofit private foundation. Um, so together with USTA Southern um, and hopefully the community here, this is going to be the this is going to be the way that we can bring all the underserved kids and the community to one public facility during the week and fill those tennis courts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all day during the day and at night, you know, it, like Little Rock does it. We got such a lot of tennis players. Um, so the right size facility to do that in uh, with classrooms to teach the kids after they get off the tennis court, etc. I got big goals. Some of them, uh, you know, are pie in the sky. I realize it, but one reason why I started this podcast is because I'm very passionate about our community. I love Arkansas. I love Jonesboro in particular. And I want people to come here. I want, I don't want it to be a place where people start and leave. Let's build up Northeast Arkansas and be proud of the community that we have here. Yeah. So I think that's awesome that uh, the love all serve all is yes. in effect. I really wish there was something like that when I was a kid, you know, yeah, me too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I mean, it was, it was one of those things that we had a, I went to Nettleton high school. We had a tennis uh, team, but it, it wasn't like people weren't really advertising it. You know, it was football. It was basketball. It was track. Those were the pretty much the three main things that you did. And if you did anything else, it was all right. Well, it's too late for me to start playing high school tennis. I'm 17. I, I'm not going to make the high school tennis team yeah. at 17. So that is one of the reasons why the tiny tots, I'm like, I want to go ahead and get my daughter exposed mm-hmm. uh, to that and cheerleading, whatever she wants at a young age. So she will be prepared by, by the time that uh, she's going to be playing for you know her school team. So that's incredible that that is one of your goals of uh, NEA tennis. And, Absolutely. You know, I've just met so many people through tennis already. <laughs> um, a lot of the people that you work with you know morgan daniel and rich daniel and stephanie romero and uh anna kincaid and they've been nothing but helpful on uh my tennis journey and i appreciate all of the work that's going in right on me too they're great that's what makes it go right there yeah the know. people absolutely the people. absolutely just getting to just to play with uh different people and you know everybody i see i'm like hey you need to come play it's just one of those things that you uh you won't regret and the fact that it's a, a lifetime sport it just gets me even more excited that i've got a long way to go and it's just learning to enjoy the journey did you have any of your kids play tennis or anything uh yes so um everybody in my family plays tennis now it, it's funny uh some started when i started my brother you know he's three years behind me and he played for a long time and we played on the same high school team together and college team together john and i don't know if you've met him but we sound just alike <laughs> and once you meet him you won't forget him yeah he's a lot of fun to play with and he's a good tennis player uh, and he likes to play with anybody and everybody and yeah. that's what we need more of you know we need more mixing of the so people can see you know what it's like to get a little bit better and john yeah. john's good for that um and a lot of other things but uh that's my brother and then you know of course mom and dad started me and then you asked about the kids so my oldest daughter um let's see that she started cheerleading and that hooked her and i really wasn't i wasn't uh prepared to coach my kids for lack of a better way to you know i mean i just wasn't prepared to do that hard enough to coach other kids you know uh some people could do it and back then my head wasn't right so i couldn't do it uh so megan she didn't play much big time cheerleader scholarship at uca it was awesome uh well her and her husband are now into the game in Little Rock, and they're hooked on tennis, and they're beginner just like y'all, same age and getting into the game, uh, not too late, and enjoying it. And then uh, Miles played, my middle son. He played high school tennis, and he played out here at uh, Allen Park, his uh, conference championship. Um, and then my youngest, Molly, who m- moved from Memphis to Jonesboro two weeks ago, uh, uh, part of the reason she moved is th- – that tennis community out there. Um, really? Absolutely. You know, he, 
they lived in Midtown Memphis, and uh, her husband Dylan works in West Memphis. And you know, it took them twenty, thirty minutes to get from Midtown over to West Memphis. Uh, and then they started coming over here and playing some tennis. Uh, and uh, you know, one thing led to another. But they wanted to get into Jonesboro for the schools, for the smaller community, and they saw the tennis, and it doesn't take 45 minutes to get to West Memphis, you know. Um, so they're here, and they're, I don't know if you met Molly and Dylan, but they're out there playing all the time. They play three, four, five, like John does all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've met them yet, but I mean. Uh, and then John's it, wife, Tazi, she's picked it up. Okay. And she's playing. So, I, I mean, everybody's playing tennis. Yeah. And, and they're loving it. I mean, it is a, because it's a lifetime sport. Uh, and it's a great family sport. And the, oh, and the okay. nieces so and nephews I'm are ju- playing. I'm just now picking this up. Uh, Taylor Malone? Taylor Malone's my nephew. That's John's yes, son. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We played. We, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We played with yeah, him. Yeah. Him and his friends. Uh, Eli. Eli. Eli yeah. So fun. Yeah. They picked it up. Yeah. You know, and it's a way for them to sweat the beer off. Yeah. It's great. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. See, I'm just now putting that together. Yeah, mm-hmm. Tazi was on our uh, mixed doubles team, yeah. uh, for sure. But one uh, personal question I have because it's just something that we've come across as we've been playing. Is there a plan to get more beginner guys to play in Jonesboro? I'm glad you asked. And the answer to that is yes. And my plan starts with new leaders in the tennis community um, spreading the word, and they have already started to do it. Morgan, who's our new executive director, and Lori Whitby, the new president of our nonprofit board, and and some others, Ken Brown. Uh, you know, we've we've got to get new guys, and I think we've got to go to ASU. They're out there. You know, find those guys that played a little high school tennis that are looking for something good. Um, so we've got to get those guys, and then you know, go to the hospital, go to these businesses, do more tennis apprentice. Um, the, there's more people sitting on the fence than are already playing. We just got to find a way to corral everybody, uh, and keep this thing, you know, keep this tennis train going. Um, we got some hurdles, uh, and we've got some more partners to make in the community to get it done. But, uh, I need you to do it. These podcasts help yeah, anytime. Yeah. I, I hate doing it. You know, I hate hearing myself talk. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm going to say something I regret. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, for t- I'll do anything for tennis, no doubt. And, you know, we haven't made the right decision in everything we've done, but we're trying. You know, we're trying for tennis, and we're open to anything. Uh, and it's just – it's fun to be around, you know. I'm lucky to be around it, blessed to be around it. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing we kind of quickly uh, discovered is not only – uh, is there a competitive uh, circuit of tennis, but people cluster up really quickly. Like they're all about getting their teams together. So, you know, when we entered uh, as uh, new players, we we're like, well, I mean, I guess we're going to go try to find some people that were in a uh, tennis apprenticeship. And, you know, we've, we've got a nice little team uh, together of five or six guys that, you know, we're going to, we're going to put together a team coming up this, yeah. uh, this it's spring. It's probably easier than a uh, single guy or girl trying to, the Dayton scene. Yeah. Trying to find oh, absolutely. a little bit easier. And, yeah. and that's what we're trying to do. You know, have people that are smiling out there and want you to be out there and help you to play tennis. And that's what it's all about. Not winning or losing, you know, not with adult recreation tennis, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier about there kind of being a, a stigma of, you know, a certain type of person like to play tennis. How are you guys combating that stigma to letting people know that, Tennis is for everybody. Yeah. yeah, I think love all, serve all, you know, answers that for sure. Um, just opening the game to the absolute less fortunate in town and, and giving them hope. We've already got some stories. You know, if we can teach those kids especially to, you know, tennis to me is about uh, sportsmanship, you know, and, and so if, if we can read in, in true sportsmanship, it, just like golf. I mean, these are two sports where you call your own lines. Yes. And, and there's no oh, officials uh, to speak of, right? There's yeah. no, you know, you're on out your system, there on your own. Yeah. And so you figure out pretty quick who you want to do business with, who you want to be friends with out on that tennis court. Uh, but if we can teach those kids and love all, serve all, and the community and beginners that come up, um, you know, that, hey, the most important thing is to give your opponent the benefit of the doubt. 
because that's going to be repaid to you down the line. Trust me. But, you know, so many times people uh, think a ball might be going out, and so they say out, and then they question themselves. Let me tell you what. If you're questioning, go ahead and just say, oh, I don't know. Give it to them. The next point you're going to play better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's one of those things that, you know, like I said, coming from a different sports background, it's uh, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow at the beginning. You know, this is truly like a gentleman sport. Like, all right, well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take your word for it over there. You absolutely. know, um, man, what's that? You know, valuable lessons out there. Absolutely. That's My dad a, used to, t- he, you know, it's funny. He would not only punch me in the nose, but with boxing gloves, of course. But uh, <laughs> of he course. he would make some very questionable line calls growing up as a junior. Yeah, getting into that head, you. Know, and uh, it paid off <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, yeah it, did. it goes it goes back to the yeah. to the uh, uh who's going to be more mentally sound throughout the uh right throughout on, the game right and uh you know that's one of the more fun aspects uh mm-hmm. of tennis you know i could talk tennis all day about how the, the nuances you know the game it's the game within the game within the game yeah. you know you got to learn how yeah. to play the net you got to learn to play the baseline your yeah. serve has got to be a factor how you know, are you going to play with, yeah, yeah. go ahead sorry no go but ahead i always tell players to to read a book my dad hooked me on to and that, they use this book now uh corporate leaders and military leaders use it uh, but it's called The Inner Game of Tennis, uh, Timothy Galway. And uh, what a book. You know, the first half I could get for a long time. The second half got, man, it got jumbled up. My head just wouldn't stay with it. But as I got older, I continued to read that book. You know, I've read it five times, six times, and uh, have experienced what it's trying to uh, help players with and help leaders with, um, just letting go and not thinking so much. Yeah. So as a beginner, I know that I've experienced this a few times through my journey. You know, you get to the point where you understand the basics of the game. You know, you learn how to play, love, deuce, all of that. What what would you say for people that are in that similar position of how do you break through that plateau? How do you start getting better? Because there was a few weeks, a few months there that I felt like that I wasn't getting any better. So, you know, if you if you're if you're practicing the wrong way. Uh, that's one thing that's going to hold you back, right? So you've you, you got to have good practice habits uh, and good certified tennis pros are the way to that. Um, th- you know, the other thing is, like we talked about, you get what you put into it. And so uh, practice the right things too, uh, which is consistency, you know, and not trying to overpower the ball, but but keeping the ball in play, keeping the ball deep, you know, those those things there, depth will get your opponent. You keep, keep them on their heels, um, you know, and then uh, mixing it up, you know, cross-court and down the line, uh, not being afraid to go for your shots. I'm not saying over hit, but go for your shots down the line early on and, and cross-court um, just to gain the confidence of doing it when it counts. Uh, so you have to be able to take that driving range mentality in golf where you just, man, I can hit like a pro it, to the court when, it, when the score counts, you know? And yeah, so. absolutely. And I think one thing that kind of attracted me to tennis over golf, cause you know, it's just that initial, uh, entry as far as like the financial aspect. All right. Okay. I can go get a, you know, a racket and some balls out there and you can play around and have fun. Golf's a little bit more so, uh, on the expensive side you got to have somewhere to play golf there's not like a public place to go play golf so that's definitely something that i I try to uh sell people on when i'm trying to get them to come out there yeah facts are facts i mean it's cheap to get into tennis yeah you know and here in a small town if you don't have a tennis racket then you call us we got tennis right we got a bunch of them people have donated we've got tennis shoes we've got uh kids tennis clothes We've got those things, and they they don't do any good sitting in here. I want to get them out there, and so uh, you know, again, people, if if they hear this and they want to help, they want a way to volunteer. You don't have to have any tennis experience. Come in, learn the kids' names, uh, let them see you consistently. You know, be a positive role model right there, just after they've been told no all day in school. You know that we need volunteers to help us, and so reach out to us. Yeah. 
And uh, um, another kind of personal tennis question that well, I'll pick your brain while we're here. Lefty resources. Yeah. Like when me, when I'm online and I'm looking at places and most of the people that you encounter are right-handed players. I'm a left-handed player. My brother's a left-handed player. One of our friends that we play with, she's also a left-handed player. So a lot of the times when we're doing these drills and stuff, we're doing stuff with right-handed players. So I didn't know if there was like uh, you know, you know, and, and, and what you do on the right side as a right-hand player is just a mirror image on the left-hand side. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, again, you know, it takes a very experienced tennis pro to be able to show you those things. Yeah. Uh, left-handed and right-handed. Um, but I love lefties. John McEnroe is my favorite left-hander ever, but you guys got an advantage, no doubt. The ball bounces different. It spins differently. Uh, I had such a tough time with left-handers as a junior, you know. Uh, but yeah, I'd just jump all over people with that left hand, man. Yeah. Learn to spin that yeah. ball, kick that ball. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I guess that's what I was saying. I was like, we're trying to figure out a way to be able to harness that, you know, a little bit better than what we've got on our own. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about your playing career? I've never actually seen you play. Yeah, but- it's short. It's not much. I mean, <laughs> you know, I again started when I was six. Played uh, high school tennis in Batesville, singles and doubles. Um, was a decent player. I, I was a late bloomer in tennis. Um, played college tennis at Arkansas College, small college uh, in Batesville, and played against Harding and Hendricks and those schools. Um, and uh, What was your highest rating? Uh, I played 5-0 tennis for a long time. Uh, and then just injury after injury, just body, back, and tennis elbow, and you name it. Um from other things too. Played just a lot of sports, a lot of golf, and I uh, can't encourage people enough to take care of those joints, you know, before you play this game and to do things off the tennis court uh, to keep you in shape to continue to be able to play. Um, but then uh, I uh, took a uh, I took a time out in college. I was in my junior year. Uh, I, I had dropped out of college two or three times. I went to Arkansas College one time. I didn't work out. Then I went to Fayetteville and partied a lot, and then that, that didn't work out. Then came back home as about a, I think, nineteen or twenty. And uh, quick story: see that Rocky? Yeah. Balboa? Okay, yeah. so Rocky Balboa. I love the underdog, right? So at this time in my life, let me think here. I was, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd flunked out of uh, Fayetteville. I didn't even go to class that semester. So don't do that. I know this is a career. podcast hey you know don't do what pat did but so i get home feeling you know really small it's been all my dad's money and uh i uh looked in the i wanted a job immediately i need to get to work and so i looked in the newspaper and it said chicken catchers needed and it said must be in good physical condition tennis had always kept me in tip-top condition i wanted to be the best i had to work harder than everybody else small you know uh and and so my feet were my weapon getting to every ball and hustle and lasting forever and so i was in good physical condition so i I pictured in the movie rocky 2 his trainer mickey had him chasing in a little cage this chicken and his chicken was running real fast and rocky finally caught it after at the end of the movie that's what I envisioned as this job to be. It ends up, I'm at a convenience store in Batesville at midnight, and I jump in this van with a bunch of uh, toothless people, men and women, no seats in the in this true story, uh, 1986. And they took me out in these fields where these chicken houses were. We went in and we grabbed three at a time, both hands, down in the chicken goo and came out and handed them up to somebody on a semi truck and did that for three or four hours and I was about dead. I mean, I couldn't, the women were out doing me. It was awful. On the way back, they said, Now you come back tomorrow, you get paid. You get paid every, after every time. I said, I'll be back. Had no intention of going back. <laughs> Never got paid and joined the Marine Corps the next day. I was already in good physical condition and so because of tennis again. But I was sitting my junior year in college, and Saddam Hussein had uh, invaded Kuwait, and I was in in a reserve unit out of Little Rock, India Company, uh, infantry unit. They attached us to the 2nd Marine Division. I ended up in Kuwait City for six months. Planned on coming back, going back to college, but my dad had uh, a Sears store in Batesville that he had 
bought and he had a job for me and he i was in kuwait city at a at a blown up hotel on a landline and he asked me he said i got your sears store when you get back if you want i said yes sir so you know i learned sales and customer service satisfaction guaranteed refrigerators washers dryers tractors i sold those for uh eight or nine years uh, i believe we lasted it might have been seven years in retail my brother had a store up in paragold doing the same thing and we got tired of that and dad retired i went into the insurance business my brother went into real estate business uh I, I missed tennis for a long time i was out of the game for a while i picked up golf while i was into business sears then i sold insurance for another 10 years after that on my own and played a lot of golf and uh but tennis was always there i taught in between times that were rough in my life and tennis was just always there um then at age 50, after a job for 10 years over in Batesville, wholesaling cotton fabric all over the world, I uh, had a great job um, and just kind of got burned out of, of taking and chasing the dollar, uh, which I'd done all my life and not catching much of it, um, and saw this thing and, uh, you know, just a little idea turned into something really cool. That's it. Yeah. So... When you say an, an idea turned into something cool, like who did you talk to to kind of get this thing off of the ground? So I had uh, one of the things I did uh, in uh, early 2000s in northwest Arkansas was I, I taught tennis at a private club there. Uh, and I also was running the Northwest Arkansas Tennis Association. Uh, my head wasn't screwed on right. And so I didn't we didn't weren't able to be successful like we are here. I learned what not to do, right? There, um, and got a lot of great friends and saw what it could do. Um, the playbooks there, I didn't make anything up, didn't reinvent the wheel. The USTA, Parks and Rec programs, uh, they provide templates. They're out there. They can tell you what to do. If you'll do this and this and this, and I know it by heart, um, just because I've been around it so long, uh, from a, a parent watching kids play to, uh, you know, a tennis coach at a club, uh, an administrator in tennis. I'm an official uh, president of the Pros Association in Arkansas. So I've got my – I wear a lot of hats on purpose. I'm trying to give some of those up, and, and we are. You know, power to the people and let us run with love all, serve all, because, you know, I, it, it's, it's the mission now, you know, kind of where I'm at. And yeah. uh, you guys are in good hands, and I'm not going anywhere. We're going, you know, we want to, uh, we want Jonesboro to have a world class, and I say world class tennis facility for the public um, that can draw in tournaments. You know, NCAA, uh, USTA, regional, state type tournaments. You got to have twenty eight, something like that, in one place. Um, they would count Allen Park if we built something else. But, and I also want uh, in and out of the the weather. You know, I would love to have indoor courts, man. Wouldn't that be cool if That'd the be public so had them? Nice. Yeah, I mean, the consistency it provides so you don't have any interruption. Uh, you know, there are the number of reasons. Consistency, number one. You know, parents bringing their kids somewhere, uh, wondering if they're going to have tennis or not. That's big. You know, it's hard for them to get over here, and that's just one little thing. And mosquitoes are a big thing. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> but, absolutely but yeah being you know able it's to an play. outdoor sport too you know u.s yeah. opens outdoor and uh, i'm an outdoor player i love it i love the elements i love the sun i love the wind you know i love anything i can use against my opponent you know that they hate that's it you know yeah that's the competitive part of it uh, absolutely so been going for five years where do you yeah. see any eight tennis in another five uh, you know, I, I, I see a, uh, another tennis facility in five years, um, here in Jonesboro. Do you have and, any like idea, you know, we're just kind of just yeah. pulling stuff out of the, yeah. the air here. And do you have any I'm idea like where that would be located? Uh, no, oh, okay. I, I don't, you know, there's, uh, when, when, uh, when Jonesboro passed the food tax earmarked for a complex, uh, looks like that's coming to fruition across from the trim gym there and yeah, yeah. nice big facility, which is great. You no know, tennis in that though. Awesome. Not now, not first phase pickleball. I hear, which is awesome. I think it's a great sport, great crossover sports. Um, but they need their own tennis. They need their own courts. Pickleball so big. They need their own courts. You don't want to play tennis and pickleball right next to each other. As you've seen the, the noise. Um, but 
tennis second phase heck yeah maybe out at joe mack park city already owns a land out there um you know that'd be a wonderful place to to put a few indoor uh and some outdoor uh and start drawing people it's you know there's a lot of different options uh it's gonna take a lot of work it's gonna take more than pat malone you know i'm just a i'm just a preacher <laughs> you know i'm the messenger and uh you know i, I got uh, you know, I dream big sometimes, too big, no doubt. Uh, but tennis is important, and it'd be great if we had something like that here in town. So I see that. I see uh, NEA tennis, whether it's called NEA tennis or the NEAT or whatever it is, public community tennis, I, I don't see it. Uh, I just see it growing, you know, and getting better. Uh, but, again, we got a lot of hard work to do ahead of us. It's a challenge, no doubt. Absolutely. And um, I'm excited to be a part of uh, that you journey. Any, anywhere, any any place, you know, if you guys are hosting a tournament, I'm going to try my best to be there. Or sad I couldn't be at the, the Christmas jingle. I heard it was yeah, a pretty you know, good tournament. Yeah, tournament. fun. And, and uh, that's what it's all about. And, and uh, Morgan, the Tennis Association, other leaders were putting together uh, an information and a calendar uh, online to where you can see when Jonesboro Country Club has a tournament because they want you there too. Tennis is, you know, it's a sh- it's a small. So can we speak to that a little bit? Sure, so sure. like if the Jonesboro Country Club has a tournament, mm-hmm. is that open to the, the yeah. just – the, just the members or is it open to everybody yeah they're mostly they, they'll have club tournaments but you won't hear about them the uh the other tournaments are sanctioned usta tournaments open to the public open to anybody and they run great tournaments and so does the trim gym and, and uh uh ridge point country club they've got great pros directors running those things and i i think we've got to continue to uh you know work together and the pros do we don't have tournaments at the same time you know that's not good business uh and we wouldn't do that but we want to have more tournaments uh and and get everybody involved and you know a lot of people just don't catch facebook a lot of people don't catch email a lot of people don't catch instagram i wish there was a airplane flying over town you know, all day with a that's you know, old school, yeah. yeah tennis, <laughs> tennis, man, tennis.com. You know, yeah, okay. Well, this has definitely been informative. I feel like I learned a lot. Me uh, too. Of, I learn every yeah. day. Yes, yeah, from you and your mission with love all, serve all, and I'm looking forward to what you, uh, you bring to Northeast Arkansas. And I appreciate all the work that you do for us. Uh, in the in the city right now yeah um, appreciate it. is there anything that you want to get out there where everyone can reach you anything you want to plug before we let you go yeah you know so uh you know like us on facebook nea tennis uh we have a free phone app which is court reserve that's probably the most important thing is that just a nea app it's a it's a uh it's a it's software that other uh organizations around the country use yeah um and software that schedules coaches and lessons um you know those types of things but we'll put have our calendar on there but it's a free app um that if people will create a membership and it's for again free uh then they'll get certain text and emails you know about all of the things that we're doing and we're still trying to make it better. You know, technology changes every single year, man, and you got to stay on top of it. And we've done a pretty good job with that app. That app has uh, been an instrumental part of growing community tennis. And, and, and no doubt, there's no way we could have done it without that app. Um, so get the Court Reserve app. You can join for free NEA Tennis. And again, Facebook, uh, you call me. Uh, I'm always, I'm available 24 seven, you know, for tennis. Absolutely. So we'll definitely put that in the, uh, the show notes and the description to where you can reach out to Pat, where you can get plugged into NEA tennis and yeah, go out there and play tennis. I, I encourage everybody that has not tried it to try it because it's one of those things that you'll fall in love with and you'll be hooked like the rest of us. Well, Pat, I appreciate you uh, sitting down with me, uh, today And uh, it was very insightful to hear your story, how you got started with the game and how you plan on bringing the game to Northeast Arkansas and making sure that everybody is able to play tennis. Very cool. Thank you for letting me talk about tennis. Absolutely. out there, my man. Appreciate it. Yeah. So this has been another episode of the Clever Angle Podcast. Make sure that you like and subscribe and make sure you leave us a five star review uh, on the podcast because it helps us out a lot. Um, Thank you for listening. And until next time, peace.